William Wordsworth's epic poem, The Prelude, is comprised of 13 books in unrhymed verse. And although our study guide focuses on selected books, all 13 are summarized right here. Each book's title signifies a period of Wordsworth's life, including his hopes and experiences and a detailed record of his emotional, spiritual, and lyrical developments. He praises those closest to him, especially his sister Dorothy and the poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge. Wordsworth finished the poem in 1805, but revised it continually for the rest of his life. Books one and two, titled Introduction, Childhood and School Time, and School Time Continued, focus on the poet's childhood and youth. He describes how he came to understand nature more and more and to rely on it in his imagination. Book three, Resonance at Cambridge, focuses on the poet's times as a student, which are mixed, since he does not fully concentrate on the courses or even his fellow students, treasuring his solitude. In book four, Summer Vacation, Wordsworth vacations, growing his imagination. He tries to imagine himself and his shadowy perceptions more. In book five, books, Wordsworth continues his education and narrates the influence visionary poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge has had on him. He describes a particular vision he's had and develops the theme that men are caught between the dream of immortality and the acceptance of limitations. In book six, Cambridge and the Alps, Wordsworth is abroad, taking long excursions and hikes in the European Alps at the borderlands of France, Switzerland, and Italy. He and a friend cross a mountain without knowing it. In France, he praises the revolution. Book seven, Residence in London, returns the poet to London and shows all aspects of daily life at the time, circa 1795. Book eight, Retrospect, Love of Nature Leading to Love of Mankind, alternates descriptions of city and rural life. The poet relates a love of nature to a love of mankind, not in an idealized state, but in everyday lives. In Book 9, Residence in France, France is in the midst of the turmoil of its revolution, but Wordsworth does not pay much attention to political events as he does to human ones. Book 10 is split into Books 10 and 11 in some editions. Either way, Residence in France details the internal struggle in the country of the factions involved in the revolution. Wordsworth is disillusioned, but doesn't give up his beliefs in liberty and a better life. Book 11, Imagination and Taste, How Impaired and Restored, gives reflecting insight into the poet's mental and emotional struggle following his return to England. He finds meaning in spots of time, memories of significant minor events he witnessed long past. Book 12, Imagination and Taste, How Impaired and Restored, concluded, is the continuation of Book 11. He contemplates the ancients who built Stonehenge and the varieties of human nature. Book 13, Conclusion, ends the epic poem as Wordsworth repeats his great love for nature as supreme teacher and authority. The imagination remembers emotions and reflects on them to find meaning. The poet gains supreme insight as he climbs another mountain, an experience from which he wrings much metaphorical power and sees light and truth.